said in Joshua chapter number 24. I'm going to read two verses, very famous verse. Uh, verse 14, the Bible says, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Father, for the good testimonies. Lord, thank you for being a good God. Now, Lord, thank you for the precious promises of the Word of God, the truths contained therein, the facts contained therein. God, thank you for the hope we can uh, muster up in our soul through reading the Scriptures and how you deal with men. Now, Father, I pray that you would sit down amongst us now. You'd bless the preaching of the Word of God. Father, help me to say everything you'd have me to say and help me not say anything contrary to the Word or will of God. I pray that Jesus would be magnified and exalted and lifted up. And I pray your perfect will would be accomplished in the hearts of your people. I do pray if there's any amongst us tonight unsaved, that tonight you would roll back the scales from off their eyes and show them their lost condition and help them to put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. Father, I pray for those that are saved. But Lord, uh, they're living far beneath the privileges afforded them as being a child of God. I pray tonight you'd reveal that to them and God, we'd see them uh, serving and living like a Christian should. Father, I pray for that one that is struggling, you would help them. That one that is low, you would lift them up. That one who may be defeated, that Lord, they'd leave out living in victory. Now, Father, get glory to your glorious name. We'll not fail to bow these unworthy heads. And thank you once again for being a good God. Use this unworthy vessel. Help us now, Father, for without you we can do nothing. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. And amen. Uh, I want you to notice several things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the call to remembrance. We won't take time to read them, but beginning in verse number 2, Joshua begins to read, uh, reveal the history of Israel. He talks about where that God brought them from, all the way back before Abraham to where they are now, and how God used Moses, and how God parted the Red Sea, and how God brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, and how God defeated their enemies, and how God subdued their enemies, uh, and how God moved once and once again in their lives uh, and God revealed Himself mighty unto them. Look in verse number 12, though. As he summarizes uh, the call to their remembrance, he said, uh, 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 the Lord speaking, And I sent the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you. Can you imagine? God was so good, they didn't even have to fight. God sent hornets and ran them out of their own land. Huh? Isn't that just like God? Uh, His ways are above our ways. Uh, Israel had been slaves for 400 years. They were not men of war. Uh, they didn't know how to fight for themselves. Uh, God uh, allowed them to cross over into, dry, uh, uh, into uh, 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 Canaan land after uh, 400 years of bondage in Egypt and 40 years of uh, wandering in the wilderness. Uh, and they go over there, uh, 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 no more equipped to fight than I am. Uh, uh, but yet God sent uh, hornets before them and God sent uh, a great move before them and God went held up inside of them uh, uh, some mustard where they could fight God caused the walls uh, of Jericho to fall down before them uh, hey God's not limited God's well able uh, and God can handle whatever you're faced with uh, he said he sent the hornet before them huh? notice what else he says uh, 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 even the two uh, kings of the Amorites but not with thy sword nor with thy bow uh, and I have given you a land uh, for which ye did not labor uh, and cities which ye built not uh, and ye dwell in them uh, of the vineyards and olive yards uh, which ye planted not do ye eat uh, he called to remembrance how good he'd been hmm? you know what if I could tonight I'd like to call to your remembrance how good God's been to you 
You're faring a lot better than you've sowed, I promise you. You're living better than you deserve tonight. Uh, God's been good to you. Hey, you'd have to say every need supplied. Uh, and there's a call to remembrance. Now notice the charge in verse 14. He said, Now, therefore, in lieu of how good God's been to you and what all God's done for you, now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Can I say there's no other way to serve Him? You either got to be sincere and truthful with God or what you have isn't real. It's just false. It's built on false pretenses. and That's why there's so many people who go to church don't have any power with God. They don't serve Him in sincerity and truth. What a charge. He goes on to say, And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. What a charge. huh? Uh, it's amazing. Preacher gets to preaching a little bit about where people live, and they think, oh, well, he's a meddling. Mm -mm. No, he's trying to help you. Uh, do you realize if you're not serving God in sincerity and truth, God doesn't hear your prayers? Because mm -mm. if you regard iniquity in your heart, he won't hear you. Do uh, you realize anything you put before God becomes your idol? Mm. You may not be serving some uh, 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 God of Buddha, but you may be serving some false God. Anything that gets more of your attention than God does, that becomes your God. I charge you tonight, if you've got something before God, put it away and serve the Lord. We see the charge. We see the call to remembrance. Now notice the choice in verse 15. He says, And it seemed evil to you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers that your fa which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's a choice to be made. Who are you going to serve? Joshua said, You can serve whoever you want to. He said, But mark her down. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hmm? Hmm? And some of you all need to make that decision. You say, oh, we serve God. Do you really? Is He your first thought and your last thought of every day? Do you serve God in sincerity and truth? Or you just entertain God? You know when you get serious with God? When the bottom falls out. Mm -mm. When it's your child in the hospital. When it's your nephew having struggles about ready to die, then all of a sudden you want to get serious with God. Uh, let me help you something. You better be serious every day of your life because those days come and you're not serious with God, He won't take you serious. You better choose you this day whom you'll serve. Now notice, if you will, the consequences. See, there's always consequences with your choices. Hmm? Brother Greg Phillips says it this way. Choices has has children. Hmm? There's consequences to your choices. Every choice you make, there's a consequence that comes with it. Choices for good, there's good consequences. Choices for bad, there's bad consequences. Hmm? You didn't just get to where you got because life just happened. No, you got to where you got because of the choices you've made. Hmm? Notice the consequences. Look at verse 19. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is an holy God. He's a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins uh, if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods. Uh, then He will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that He hath done you good. God's been good to you. There's consequences to your cho choices. And if you serve other gods, uh, you put other things before God, uh, you can't serve God. He's a holy God. He's a jealous God. Uh, and He will deal with you based on your choices. Now notice the last thing Joshua gives before them that we're going to look at tonight. Notice the condition or the requirement set before them. Look at verse 22. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods 
which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. Can I say there are requirements to serving the Lord? Now, I know who I'm preaching to tonight. I'm preaching to the Wednesday night crowd. But just because you come to church don't mean you're serving the Lord. Just because you occupy a church pew don't mean that God occupies your heart. I remind you what Jesus told the Pharisees. He quoted Ezekiel and Isaiah. He said, with your lips you do honor me, but your heart is far from me. And there's a lot of people sitting in churches thinking they're appeasing God by their presence. Can I say something? God's not interested in our presence. We need to be interested in His presence. I want to preach on this thought tonight. God's business is serious business. God's business is serious business. You see, every time we come to church, it's life or death. It is. It's life or death. If somebody here is lost and they don't get born again, they stay dead in trespasses and sins. For those that are saved, if they come and they don't get closer to God, they leave out in the same condition. Uh, uh, my dear friends, you don't leave the same condition. You leave worse uh, because you didn't do what God said and you start dying spiritually. Can I say, we're getting ready to go into a great campaign of camp meeting. But there's folks that aren't ready for it. Uh, listen, I can take you over there and show you what the writer of Hebrews said, that you're to respect the man of God because he watches for your souls. And can I say, as I've been up on, the, uh, up on the stern of the ship watching, I've seen some of you starting to drift. You're headed the wrong way, friend. And the problem is, as you begin to drift, you drift a little farther, a little farther, you don't understand why you're drifting, how far you're getting away from the shore. My dear friends, you don't want to head on out that way. There's nothing but danger out there. God's business is serious business. It's about time we get serious about the things of God. If you can't look in this country you can't look in people's homes, uh, if you can't look and see what's going on in this world uh, and realize that we need God on the scene, that we need revival, that we need to see God do something, friend, you're in bad shape. God's business is serious business, and God's wanting us to get serious with Him. Can I say some things about God? He takes His business very seriously. God is very serious about the offering that He gave. He gave His Son. He's very serious about that. Can I say, you and I come to church and we plop down and say, well, we've worked hard this week and we've got this going on, we've got that going on, and this has happened and that's happened and uh, 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 whatever, uh, and we think, boy, uh, it's just rough. God looks at it as He gave His Son and it's a privilege for us to get to come to His house. Mm -mm. Can I say God didn't give an angel? God bankrupt heaven and gave His only begotten Son. Uh, can I say when Jesus uh, was getting ready to be nailed to the cross at Calvary, uh, there wasn't a ram in the thicket like Abraham had. Uh, no, uh, God turned His back on His Son uh, and let Him crucify Him. Uh, let Him bleed and die for your sin and my sin. Uh, God takes very serious the offering that He gave uh, uh, for you and I to have the privilege of knowing Him. Uh, God's business is serious business. He takes very serious the offering He gave. He gave His Son. Hmm? And all he asks us to give is our heart. Just give him our best. Let me ask you a question tonight. Have you given God your best lately? Well, it's awful quiet in here tonight. Hmm? You know why? Because you just realized this message tonight isn't a Joel Osteen message. This message tonight is a come to Jesus message. Hmm? His business is serious business. He takes serious the offering that He gave. He gave His Son. Can I say God takes very serious the opportunity that He provides. He provides salvation. 
<laughs> Thank you, Brother Clint. Brother Clint's in tune. I'm going to go to talk, just talk to Brother Clint. God didn't have to offer you salvation. Huh? You was an old Gentile dog on your way to hell, deserved to go there. You was a sinner by birth, sinner by practice, sinner by nature. You deserved to die and go to hell. Why would God care about you? I don't know why God would care about you. Uh, if I was God, I wouldn't have cared about you, but He cared about you. Uh, uh, he gave the offering that would take to save you, uh, and then He made a way that one day Vince Powell come down by your house uh, and talk to you about the Lord, uh, bring you to church, and just go by and keep bringing you to church, and keep bringing you to church. Uh, one day the gospel became real to you, uh, and you trusted in the Lord uh, and he saved you uh, and God takes that very serious only God would orchestrate throughout time and eternity uh, what it would take uh, uh, to get that little cowboy uh, uh, to the gospel uh, and then give him an opportunity to be saved uh, he takes that serious he takes your salvation very serious I wonder how serious do you take it? How serious do I take it? Hmm. We come and say, yeah, I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. But do you realize what all that means? The connotation behind the terminology that you've been saved? You've been rescued? Rescued from sin, from Satan, and even from yourself? Because your biggest enemy in the act of salvation wasn't the devil. Uh, it wasn't the sin. It was yourself arguing with God that you needed to be saved. And he still just kept pleading with you in his long suffering the way you came to him. God takes it very serious. The opportunity he gave you. Now, you may not take it very serious. Brother Bob, as we sit here right now, there's billions of Chinese that never get to hear the gospel because the leaders of that country have decided they're keeping the gospel out of that. Going by the grace of God, you weren't born in China. What an opportunity that you could be saved. You could be in India where they teach anything and everything can be a God. You want a pencil to be a God, that can be your God. Many of them don't want to hear the gospel. What an opportunity has been afforded you. God takes that serious. He said, if God was loving, how come God doesn't go to the Chinese? God tried. They didn't want him. Hmm. We don't understand the privilege of being born in America. We don't understand the privilege of a church house being on every corner. We don't understand the privilege of having a Bible. You can even get a Bible at Walmart. We don't understand that. Uh, uh, but God takes serious the opportunities afforded us in salvation. And I say this, He takes serious the ordinance, or I'm sorry, the obedience He demands. He demands service. You see, Brother James, when He saved you, He said that He would forgive you of your sin, pardon you from all transgression, and that He would give you a robe of righteousness, that He would justify you by your faith, that He would give you a home in heaven, uh, that He'd give you a mansion over the hilltop. Uh, he would provide all of that for you, and all He asks in return is that you understand your life's no longer your own. He paid for it, and He wants you to serve Him. God takes that serious. Hmm. You know what He don't like, Sid? He don't like for us to want to be saved on our terms and to serve on our terms. When it's convenient, God will serve you. Uh, it doesn't work that way. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. He expects us to always be Christian. Not just when it's convenient. Mm. Mm. He takes seriously the obedience He demands. Now some of y'all think I'm a tyrant. I don't really care. Uh would you talk to my children? They'll let you know Dad laid down the law. There were some things Dad wasn't going to accept. The writer of Hebrews tells us that if our 
earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their children. Our earthly fathers know how to correct their children. How much more our heavenly father? Hmm? Huh? By the way, I know a lot of preachers that are heartbroken because they use their children to be the yardstick for everybody else to measure their children. We just let our kids be kids. And I told y'all when I took this church 20-something, well, I've got to talk to you again because you're the only one who's here. <laughs> now, if they messed up, don't worry, I'd take care of it. You, know, you don't have to raise my children for me. Huh? But listen, they're not perfect, but they all are serving the Lord. I bless the Lord. Huh? Now listen, you can raise them right, you can treat them right, you can do right by them. Doesn't mean they're all going to serve the Lord. they got a will. But I will say this, some of you, your children might not be here because you're too loose. Maybe they seen you didn't take it serious enough, so they don't take it serious. God takes it serious. Huh? There's a lot of things my children can say about me, and it's true. But one thing they will tell you, Dad's serious about the church. He's serious about the Lord. I wonder, can your children say that about you? Can your grandchildren say that about you? You see, children learn hypocrisy at the home. This is what the Bible says about obedience. Boy, it's getting, getting quieter. I must be right where I need to be tonight. Leviticus 20 and 22 says this, Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew you not out. Can I say, you can believe what you want to believe. The reason there's so many violent storms that hit America the reason there's so many very bad floods in America, the reason we have to rebuild New Orleans every other year in America, it seems like, uh, the reason there's so many uh, uh, tornadoes and hurricanes and things that hit America, it's the land spewing Americans out. This land was founded on the principles and oracles of God. And this land doesn't even resemble what she started out as. And you can believe what you want to, but I believe it's the judgment of God coming against this nation, and it's only beginning, friends. 1 Samuel 15, 22, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Boy, people come. They'll sacrifice their time to come. They'll give their tithes. They'll give their offerings. They'll think, boy, that's good enough. But listen to what it goes on to say. As in, uh, uh, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. God expects obedience out of His children. Romans 6.16 says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey... His servants ye are to, to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Let me ask you, are you serious about your obedience? God is. God's business is serious business. He's serious about the offering, His Son. He's serious about the opportunity salvation. He's serious about obedience and service. Let me say this. God's serious about the uh, objurgation he hands down or the sentencing he hands down see God's serious about judgment I was listening as brother Ogle preached on Sunday morning the first altar is about grace and the last altar is about judgment now, I've got news for you God's going to right every wrong can I say the Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day you know why? Because He gave His Son so they wouldn't be wicked, so they'd get saved. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Now you hear me and hear me well what I'm about to say. At the great white throne judgment, Brother Aaron, when God sentenced people to the lake of fire because they rejected the Son of God, by the way, the only sin that sends you to hell is the sin of unbelief. But can I say, uh, God's not going to wince or wink 
at all when he proclaims for the angels to bind them hand and foot and throw them off in the lake of fire. God's not going to regret it. God's not going to feel bad about it. God's a just God. God's a holy God. But listen, when God gives the sentence, they determine in this life that they reject the Lord Jesus Christ and in the life to come, they'll spend eternity in the charred region of the damned because they did not take serious God's business he's very serious about the sentence he hands down it's only by the grace of God we heard the gospel and got saved then he tells us to make sure we tell others so they too can get saved I said God's business is serious business and I just gave you just four things God's very serious about my question is how serious are we well let me go ahead and give you the answer your, your life gives the answer how serious you are listen none of us are fooling God I got news for you a lot of times we aren't even fooling other people Hmm? our life shows how serious we are it's answered by our adoration for God still amazes me how many people come to church and they'll talk about the weather they'll talk about their problems they'll talk about their pain rarely is it that people come in that door and say hallelujah we get to come and worship Jesus we can talk about every sports team. We can talk about everything going on in the world. We can talk about the goofy pipeline and the goofy bridge they're building. But we don't come seeking the Lord. We don't come to worship Him. That's what church is supposed to be, is worship. You know why we don't come to worship? Because we're not serious. You'd think after COVID, and fortunately we only got shut down for a few weeks before we had it. There are some churches shut down the whole year. You would think that this year churches would be kicking the walls out just being thrilled to be able to come back. But some of you already got over. Even the revival meetings we had last summer. Remember when all the kids used to sit up front and was hung on every word and was hitting the altars and praying? Where are they at? Just not serious about it anymore see it in our adoration you see how serious we are it's answered by our attitudes how's your attitude tonight y'all be thankful you're saved y'all be thankful you had the health to come to church go back here and talk to brother Ray I talked to him yesterday he's killing him missing two weeks of church watching live stream for whatever reason didn't even get to see Sunday night till Phil was about halfway done preaching uh and he actually had some good things to say, Bray, and you missed it. Huh? Killed him. He couldn't come to church. He's not feeling well tonight, but he wasn't going to stay home. One more service. He had to come. Huh? Our attitude affects our altitude. Huh? There's nothing worse than people got bad attitudes. If there's anybody that shouldn't have a bad attitude, I'll be saved, folks. Mm, you ought to have a good attitude. Huh? Why? This is close to hell's we're ever going to get. Well, it can be seen in our aspirations. It's amazing just talking. And a lot of times I walk through, I'm just listening. It's amazing what everybody talks about when they're at the house of God. All their dreams, all their hopes, and everything. It's, it's about everything but God. Mm. Well, it used to be a time folks would say, boy, all I want to see is the Lord show up one more time. How about our aspirations? Mm. You can see how serious we are in our abidance or obedience. How obedient are we to the Scripture?
if the Lord was to reveal in a little cloud above every one of our heads how much we've spent in the Word of God this week, I wonder how embarrassed we'd be. How much of the scriptures we've read and studied and meditated on. And then compare it to how much we've read and studied and thought about other things. Hmm? How obedient have we been to the sanctuary? Hmm? What a blessing to have this church. We've got a great church, a great church family. But I fear too many are starting to take it for granted. I think it's always going to be here. Makes me want to dust off two messages. One many of you have never heard. Preached a message years ago on they got what they wanted, but they lost what they had. Well, that's been weighing on my head and in my heart heavy. I must be going to be preaching one of these meetings I'm going to. They got what they wanted, but they lost what they had. Adam and Eve got what they wanted. We're still paying for it today. David looked at Bathsheba. He got what he wanted, but he lost four sons. Hmm. Samson got what he wanted. Lost his eyesight, lost his power with God, and eventually lost his life. Uh, boy, that mess has been weighing on me. And then one I refer to every once in a while. You won't miss the water till the well runs dry. Just keep taking it for granted. Hmm. You know why there's so many dead, dry churches in this area? Because people started taking them for granted when they weren't dead and dry. There are churches in this area that used to be on fire for God, used to have a testimony for God, and today they're just a museum. That'll be said about this church if we don't tar start taking it serious. We've seen in our obedience to supplication. Boy, there's been a lot said about prayer tonight. I wonder how much we really pray. Hmm? How come we have no problem talking to other folks or talking on the telephone, but we got a real problem talking to God where He can really change everything that we're facing? I'm reminded when Jesus is overlooking Jerusalem and he's weeping, he says, How many times would I have not gathered thee as a hen but gathers her chicks? But Israel wasn't interested in him. How many times would God not have stepped in and helped you? But you're not interested in God. How serious are we? It's serious business, folks. I wonder how serious. We are about sanctification. Jordan preached on a little bit Sunday night. Being set apart for the glory of God. Hmm. Well, Josh hit it on, uh, on it as well. When was the last time you just put a blank sheet for God and said, Here, God, whatever you want to do in my life, I'm already faring better than I deserve. Whatever you want to do, Father. Make a conscience and public profession. That, Lord, my life is yours. Thy will be done. I wonder how serious we are about sowing the Word of God, telling others about Jesus. And then lastly, how, how serious we are about bringing the first fruits into the storehouse. Tithing. Giving God the first fruits. I wonder how serious we are. God's business, serious business. There's been too many playing games. Remember when Jesus was hanging on Calvary and they cast lots for his garment? It's another message I preached one time, Aunt Lynn, remember that one? Playing games at the foot of the cross. There's too many people playing games at the foot of the cross. Too many people playing games with the things of God. 
Too many people. How many times has God got to tell you, got to warn you, got to show you? Uh, I didn't talk to Brother Ogle about anything. I was just glad to be able to have him. I mean, Brother Ogle's getting up there in years. I was just glad that he came. I didn't say anything about telephones. But he did. Must be a problem. Must be an idol. If it goes off, you're going to answer it. But yet God speaks through the Word of God and you never, ever entertain what He has to say. God's business, serious business. You want to see God do something in your families? You want to see God do something in this church? You want to see God do something in the communities and in our city and in our nation, in our government? Boy, does God need to do something there? You want to see that happen? Then start getting serious about God. Go throughout the pages of the scriptures. Every time God's people were serious about God, God did serious things. But when you want to be given to follow, you remember when Moses is up communing with God on the mountain and God's giving him the tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments? What happened down at the bottom of the mountain? They started uh, making a golden calf and worshiping the gods of Egypt and they were um, just caught up in all kinds of folly and myrrh and all that kind of stuff. What happened? The earth opened up and swallowed a bunch of them suckers up that day. But when they were serious about serving God, God parted Red Seas and did great things. I wonder, how serious are you about God's business? God's very serious about His business. Maybe you'll start seeing more happen in your life, your family's life, you get more serious about God's business. And I'm talking from the pulpit to the back view. It's about time we got busy, been, you know, got serious about the things of God. He's coming soon. And he's coming for a bride without spot, without wrinkle. How serious are you about the business of God? Some are coming. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. God's serious tonight. He's just looking for a few serious folks that he can change the world with. He took 12 men, and one of them was of the devil, and he turned the world upside down. What could he do with a church that got serious about him? No telling, friend. I sure would like to find out. I do know it's time to get serious with God. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank you. For even though you're serious, you're still long-suffering. You still touch with the feeling of our infirmities. God, you still call for us to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. God, you still are willing to forgive, show tender mercy, loving kindness. So God, I pray you'd help us to get serious, as serious about your business as you are. That God, we could see lives changed. Help us, Father, put you first. Help us, Lord. To have a life, as Brother Clint's already prayed, to shine as a light in this dark world. Help us, Father. Oh, help us to be obedient to thy voice. Bless now this invitation. Lord, these folks are praying. Whatever they're dealing with you about, God, hear them, bless them. Bless their lives. Help them, Lord, to make a difference. God, do change our, our families, change our church, change our community. Change our country. God, change our government. God, you're the only one that can. And so, God, we implore and plead for you to do so. And God, change us in the process. Well, thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.